From vitamin A to zinc and almost every letter in between. Many are touting the benefits of dietary supplements, but do we really know what we're putting inside our bodies? And are we taking the right amounts even if we do? Are supplements the elixir of life or a fool's errand? So watch your round table with me, David Foster. Omega-3 is one of our favorite supplements, but a comprehensive study has just found that it has little or no benefit for your heart health. So is the billion dollar dietary supplement industry just filling our cupboards with quackery? Dietary supplements can be questionable. Experts are either for, against, or somewhere in between. So are they the elixir of life or a quack remedy? And what are supplements really doing to our bodies? Dietary supplements are one of the fastest growing health markets. Aging, fitness and self-care is driving their growth. Athletes and bodybuilders use them to bulk up. Some people take them for a healthier lifestyle, while older adults take them to maintain their health. So it's no wonder that the industry is worth $37 billion a year in the US, and was worth $553 million in the UK in 2016. Some dietitians argue having a balanced diet means you don't need supplements, while others point out it can be difficult to always get the right nutrients. So what vitamins are proven to be effective? According to dietitians, the most important supplements are vitamin D, iron, vitamin B12, calcium, vitamins A and C, and folic acid. But taking them too much to replicate a healthy diet can also be harmful. We're saying today that it's high doses that we're concerned of. If you take a multivitamin, for example, that's probably not going to be a problem. It's people who actually take high doses or a multivitamin and then add to that with other single nutrient supplements. If you're looking for a quick fix from one magic pill, supplements are probably not the answer. A healthy diet is key to well-being. First and foremost, people should look at their diet and look to improving their diet before they go out and um, spend money on, on vitamin supplements. Omega-3 fish oil supplements are taken by millions worldwide for a healthy heart and brain. But a new study says it doesn't reduce the risk of heart disease. We would still advocate to people taking oily fish as part of a healthy, balanced diet. We don't currently advocate taking supplements in any case. So they're not always worth the hype and aren't monitored in the same way medicines are. Many argue that the industry is poorly regulated and anyone can buy supplements online these days without really knowing what's inside. Taking food supplements depends on each individual case. With expert advice from a health professional, we can have a better understanding of what we need. But with so many options on the market, are we taking too much? And are they causing more harm than good? Pleased to say that at the round table with me today, we have the nutritionists, Rhiannon Lambert and Jenna Hope, as well as Matt Murphy from Feel Supreme, his health and wellness company. So you know a thing or two between you about what we should or shouldn't be putting in our bodies. Uh, you can start off, Rhiannon. There's a lot of rubbish out there, isn't there? Unfortunately, there is a lot of rubbish out there, yes. The supplement industry is one that uh, I would say needs a bit more regulation if possible. People aren't really sure what's in the supplements they can buy online, for instance, compared to what they can buy on your local high street. So it's a bit of a um, trial and error process, and not everybody needs supplements, David. I think that's the thing to consider here. The thing is, yeah, it's going to be almost impossible to find out. If you look online, what's good for you? Because somebody who's selling it is going to tell you it's fine, and somebody who doesn't like the idea is going to tell you it's nonsense. So how do you find out the truth? Absolutely. Well, um, we do know that a lot of the supplements that you can buy online, they don't fully disclose all the ingredients in there. So there is a risk when you are buying online, and I think people need to be aware of that. So often you might think, oh, I'll buy it online, it's cheaper, it's easier. But actually, is that the safest way to so do it? So you should pay more money, or is it an expensive product just to cloak perhaps for its again I think it really depends on the supplement um, it's not necessarily to say that the more expensive the supplement the better quality but you should be looking into the general quality of the supplement and what it can offer you and how 
much they're disclosing to you. Matt, I don't want to put you in, in the corner of those who are defending supplements because clearly there are some that aren't good and some that are good, and yours are all very natural. But going back to, to Jenna's point here about listing what's what, would anybody who bought something from you know exactly what was in there? Yeah, every one of our supplements has a full disclosure, both online and on the labels as well, exactly what's in there. Uh, everything that is in there, it's, it's completely plant-based. There's no chemicals, no fillers, binders, anything like that. Just all completely plants crushed. But how would I know that that plant, which presumably I may not have heard of, is going to be good for me? That it might not react with something else? Education. Purely education, that's it. And if you go back to regulation, I think the industry, it is regulated. But how do you quantify whether it's regulated enough? So there are different bodies who do regulate the FSA, Trade and Standards, to an extent. That's the Food Standards Authority. Yeah, yeah. Food Standards Authority. That's the um, The likes of the CBD oils as well. You've got the Cannabis Trades Association who regulate this. So every time you get a product regulated, you've got to go through that process first. Everything's got to be signed off by a regulatory body to so say... So you take everything that you put into your plants and you say to somebody, is this OK? And they are clued up, yeah? Yeah, so it all comes with a test certificate. So that test certificate from a third-party lab then goes off to the regulatory body. See, what I don't understand, it, it, therefore, is, ha is how somebody, if, if Matt's doing it the proper way, how somebody can get away with doing it not the proper way. Mm, I think also the concern... You can get any time you want to jump in. Right. <laughs> Again, that goes back to whether there is enough regulation. So there's plenty of regulatory bodies, but to kind of regulate every company and every startup company goes purely down to man hours, which obviously comes at a cost. I do think, however, it's really important to consider that the general public may also be on other forms of medication, that certain even herbal supplements could even interact with something like the hormonal contraceptive pill, people that are on antidepressants. So we actually have to be so careful. You can even get a toxicity of certain vitamins and minerals. So if you're eating, let's say, a lot of vitamin A in your diet, and you're taking a multivitamin that has a lot of vitamin A, you might even become in danger of having too much of a good thing. Well, you see, uh, we all know that vitamins are normally expel from your body if you, if, you, if you take too many of the vitamin C, for mm. example. Isn't that right? Um, so that would be water-soluble vitamins. So mm. fat-soluble vitamins can actually be stored. So vitamin A, for example, which Brianne's talking about, is fat-soluble, so therefore it can vitamin be Vitamin A carrots. <laughs> Essentially, yeah, 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 you can yeah. find some vitamin A in carrots. Um, sea sunlight, sea citrus fruit. Oh, you've, you, you've got it. Oh, well, I've, um, I've had a few years to <laughs> pick it up. So I do think it's really important for people to understand that as well. Um, it, you know, yes, some vitamins are excreted, but not all of them. So what happens if I get too much vitamin A in my body? So you I know my skin can turn a little yellow. That is true, isn't it? It is, actually, yeah. The colour of your skin can definitely change. But, but what's but it going to do to my health? OK, so there's lots of different risk factors for having what we call a toxicity of a certain supplement. This can also affect your mood, your fatigue, can also put you at risk of other illnesses at that point in time. So we do have to be extremely careful. So here we are, Matt. And again, I don't want to put you in the position of just being the defender of this, because you've got a lot more to add, add than that. But let, let's, let's pick up on vitamin A. Uh, it might be in some of your supplements. I don't know whether it is or it isn't. But how do you tell people not to take too much of it? With online sales, it's hard because we don't actually know the customer a lot of the time. Um, regular customers that we do have, we always give advice with. So if people are on medication or what have you, that's, I mean, you've got to speak with your doctor, your nutritionist, whatever it may be, to find out what the interactions are of whatever supplement it is. Um, but as I say, any regular customers will offer advice. We know these, we know the, the long-term ailments or whatever it may be. Uh, but people online, it, it's, it's hard. And you sell online? We do sell online. So where's the onus, on you or on them? Uh, on both. Hmm. Um, I also want to just jump in with a point here that I think it's really important... Feel to free at any time, by the mm -hmm. way. Don't, don't wait for me to ask a question from a p position of ignorance. You, two, you three <laughs> know an awful lot more about it than I do. I think it's really important to know that um, whilst some nutrients and supplements might be providing you with a benefit, they also might be causing you side effects at the same time. So there was a big um, women's health study done on over about 36,000 women. Mm. It was across seven years. So a considerable study. Um, and they were looking at supplementing vitamin D and calcium. Mm. So they were looking at the bone mineral density of um, the women. And they did find that women supplementing with the calcium mm. did improve their bone mineral density. But at the same time, they also increased their risk of kidney <coughs> stones. So when you have too much calcium, you can increase the risk of kidney stones as well. And I think that's really important that people are aware of some of those side effects of supplementing. Let's talk about health in general when it mm. comes to eating. You, you gave up sugar at an early age and decided you wanted to be a healthy person. But, but 
You two are quite fascinating. You, you were a trained soprano. Yes, I know. <laughs> you were a joiner. Yep. And you both decided that there was something that you needed to, to do that was mm. entirely different. Matt, why, why, why did you pick nutrition? I wanted to follow a passion. So from an early age, I always knew that certain foods would do certain things to the body. But I didn't know exactly what it was. Um, at the time, I was working a job I had no passion for. I was out of the house for long hours, wasn't seeing my children. And that was my sole goal from day one, just to spend more time with my children. So I followed the passion, and this is where we are. Do they take supplements? Children. Your children? Um, no, they don't. My son is nine. Mm. I'd like him to, but he's got an old mind, and he won't. OK, and what would you like him to take that uh, you can't just a, in a, food at the moment? Just a daily multivitamin. Oh. Was that the sort of multivitamin you were just saying was yeah, useless? I well, I think obviously it's a parent's prerogative to pick for their child. However, I wouldn't advise children supplementing it unless they have a condition that needs supporting or perhaps they're anemic and they need iron. There's different reasons, but I wouldn't advise any parent out there to suddenly give a multivitamin. You see, what I, why I would do it is because I don't think his diet is how it should be. He doesn't live with me full time and I am quite anal about you need to eat this, you need to eat that. But as a nine-year-old with his own mind, who I've got no say over the week. It's OK, hard. I understand it. That, that, that's a different situation. Mm. If you were at home, perhaps you might be. Uh, you see, what I don't understand uh, with, with people in general is if you're not eating the right food, then you're probably not going to know what to take in terms of the right mm. supplement. But why don't you just take the right food? Why don't you just eat spinach? Why don't you have carrots? Why don't you have... You know, a couple of bananas. Why well, on earth don't we have... Education. It's, it's education yeah. as well, but it's convenience. So, again, before I ever started selling supplements, I was a naturopathic nutritionist. So we were working with various athletes. Tell us what a naturopath is, then. It's basically using food as medicine, but not at doctor level. Kind of like stress, anxiety, digestive issues, stuff like that. Um, so we were working with a lot of pro athletes, and you'd find the very set in the ways to one focus, which is to kind of perfect their own craft, technique-wise. Um, so although nutrition is a massive part of the training, they just want a quick fix. So like some protein, whey protein powders, they're a massive... What do they do? They're the ones that build up muscle. Are they? That's what they Simply, say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've never ever proved a protein powder. Our company's been around for five years. It took me four years to develop a protein powder, because I was always Dead set against it. It's but well, these, are the one, these are the ones that you see in the, 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 the sort of mall shops that you walk past. Yeah, they, so they come in a big thing there, and you mix it up with milk or water, yeah. and you knock it back, and you go to the gym, and you end up three times the size you were last Wednesday. <laughs> is that the if it were that easy, form? David, I'd, I think everybody would be knocking it back. I don't <laughs> want to be three times the size <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah, I don't <clears> think <throat> it, it does work that way. Protein powders are, again, something that a lot of people don't know the ingredients that's inside them. So a lot of the mass market protein powders, unfortunately, have artificial sweeteners in them lots of gelling agents, things that aren't going to be as beneficial for the body. You're better but are they going to do you food. any harm? Um, I wouldn't say harmful unless consumed in excess. So you have to stick to the quantity on a packet. And actually, it depends on you as a unique person. So someone may not react well to a specific protein powder. Mm. And I also think with the whole protein hype at the moment, a lot of people are thinking the more protein, the better. And actually, we're seeing that this is going to have detrimental effects on the kidneys by over-consuming on protein. So it is really important of understanding why people are consuming them. It's not that there's no place for these supplements. It just depends on the context of why you're consuming them and if you really understand. So a lot of people now are reading things and they're thinking, oh, well, it worked for that person. It must work for me. Mm. And that's really where we're going wrong. Yeah, yes. but just to sort of distill the argument a little bit. You're talking about people who don't know and pe people who want a quick fix. Uh, I mean, you, you could equally say they're lazy and ignorant. I would I, never say someone is lazy and yeah. ignorant. No, 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 maybe they are lazy and maybe the other person's ignorant. It's not one person who's lazy. Yeah, I, I don't think it's that. I think it's... I mean, it just probably. takes time to find it out for yourself. It is. It's just yeah. a lack of education. I mean, it's not really taught in the school and system, so you've got to kind of research this yourself. Uh, so it is a lack of education and, I mean, if your friend's reaching they're getting muscles and stuff like that and you think you want those muscles you'll take the same supplements that he's taken which as you said before that's not always the case what works for one person may not necessarily work for the other person it's like a rise and i think social media has a massive mm. role to play anecdotal advice in the press uh, seeing celebrities eating certain foods i think we tend to make food choices these days based on role models which unfortunately may not be the right role model for 
people. See, the trouble is uh, almost every program we do here, somebody comes back and says, and they're absolutely right, social media is to blame. It's not social media has helped, it's social media is to blame. I do think social media has a role to help as well. Mm. So we've seen a massive rise in the wellness industry and people were looking to improve their health. And I do think social media has a role to play in that. Um, but there was some, a study done recently that showed that people are more likely to follow advice from people online who've got based on the number of followers rather than based on their mm. qualifications. And that's really where we need to start re-educating people and in looking into following the right people and understanding what they're telling them. That's definitely what we struggle with. I mean, as a registered associate nutritionist on a social media platform like Instagram, I have a daily struggle with making sure that I'm putting out information that is broad enough, that's not specific, that's not tailoring to an individual person. Now, how about this one? Um, we did a story about obesity mm -hmm. uh, earlier this week and the massive rise in the number of children mm -hmm. between the ages of 2 or 3 and 10 who are now clinically obese. And yet you say there's been a massive rise in the interest in the wellness industry. How do you, how do you square those two? So I think it's gone two ways. Um, obviously, we're still going to have the general population are not in the best health. We, we have got an obesity problem in the UK. Um, but equally, people are becoming more aware of it. So it's about them understanding what they should be taking on board. And rather than throwing out loads of different opinions and they're reading different views every day in the press, which is at the moment, which is what's happening, so people are very confused, it's about really trying to narrow that information down and ensure that what people are being told is correct advice. OK, you two against Matt, and I'm, I'm not picking on you, I promise <laughs> you about that. If you were to be interested in using his supplements, if, if hypothetical, what would you want to ask him? Well, I need to put myself in the shoes of somebody that's looking for a, um, a herbal remedy. I, so you're asking me to be a consumer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how would you make sure that what Matt was telling you or selling you, because this is a, we're trying to inform people, mm -hmm. was something that you wanted to perhaps put in your body? Um, personally, because I don't want to put anything like All right, that. All right, but let's say you're advising people. somebody. Okay, if I'm advising someone looking online, I would want to see certain stamps of approval on the website from different governing bodies. I'd want to see that they've got backed up by randomized control trials. I'd like to see studies backing up their, the use of their supplements, every ingredient listed, uh, quality control marks. I'd also like to see that they're doing background checks, so before issuing a supplement, it would be ideal to check they're not on any other medication or anything else. And have they got approval from a registered health professional like a GP or a registered dietitian or a nutritionist saying that they should be purchasing something? That would be the dream. OK. <laughs> well, I'll get you to respond to that first. Do you do that? Um, or any, are there any of those that you miss out? There are some of those that we miss out, yeah, because that's, it's unrealistic. We wouldn't be able to do that. Um, as I say, online sales... Unrealistic, therefore. People have got to kind of yeah. do their own research before they come to buy. We can't deny somebody a supplement that they want to buy online. What we sell is a food supplement. As soon as you go into the, the medicinal side of it, it's a completely different okay. The problem is some natural medicines do interact with medicine. So that I think that's where the guidelines, I think Jenna would agree. Absolutely. And I think the other thing is that people don't understand really what they're buying. And because they think they don't need a prescription for it, that it's not going to cause them harm. Mm. And whilst, you know, I really want to reiterate that in some cases there is Mm -hmm. There is a place for supplements within the diet. Yes. It's not there to replace, but it's there to supplement. Um, but it's just that people aren't aware of some of the harm, harmful <coughs> side effects that can occur. Okay, we've been knocking him a little bit, I don't know, <laughs> which is very unfair. So <laughs> therefore, your chance, <laughs> there, your chance to sell the, the benefits to this point. table uh, of what, what you put out there. Well, if I started I mean, taking them, what would happen to me? You'd end up like Superman. <laughs> uh, it, again, it wouldn't make me bigger, would it? No, 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 it would just no. make me healthier. Again, it goes back to the individual. So we don't push products that are popular. We sell products that work to the individual. Now, if people want to come to us for advice, we'll give advice on them. Uh, if people want to just buy blind online, then we've got no control over that. Uh, so the benefits, it's very much down to yourself. You've got to consider your diet, lifestyle, environmental factors. There's lots to consider. OK, let me ask you this one. You, you were a, a joiner. Yep. Yeah. You put together cabinets and beautiful pieces of furniture or Good whatever, wooden, wooden furniture, and you decided to do this a few years ago, as you say, to spend more time uh, with, with your young family. But how did you qualify? What, what qualified you to do this? Uh, I studied at the National Healthcare College, so it was a three-year course. Um, that was a basically three-year course. Uh, your third year is clinic-based. Um, you get your after that. And did you recognise in some of the people who were studying alongside you, names, no, no names, no pack drill, 
okay. that they were perhaps in it to sort of sidestep an awful lot of stuff or, or, or was everybody um, a, no, really, an upstanding no. person and in it for the right reasons? I think a lot of people who I studied with, because it's not a progression from school to, to straight to college, it's a, 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 a majority of students. So people who are in there have got life experience, they've gone in there for a reason because a family member being affected by certain illness or something. So I think everyone's gone in there with the right intentions, but as you mentioned, there are a lot of charlatans in the industry, which they're in any, any industry. As soon as the profit's involved, people will inevitably pop up and try and exploit that. And the term uh, nutritionist isn't protected, is it? So anybody can do a week's mm. course even and call themselves a nutritionist these days. Well, this well, is, this thing. is the danger, find, isn't it? You, you Should I look for letters after a, the name of somebody supplying supplements, such as you have, um, members of the... Do you know the AFN. AFN, whatever, after your name, and would that should that give me confidence? I think if you're looking for someone, at least they've done at least I would say a degree, um, perhaps a master's degree. They've they've gone through rigorous um, professional code of conduct because Jenna and I, with our regulation, we have to do CPD, continuing professional development, every year. We're investigated heavily if something even in a newspaper comes out that perhaps is incorrect. We've got somebody that will come down on us and tell us tell us off. <laughs> we have a code of conduct. Take a look at the, the picture in the middle of our table here. Okay. Yeah, and, and we know what that represents. It could be anything. It could be a bag of Smarties. It could be some sweets. <laughs> it could be some paracetamol. It could, it could be anything in particular. But do any of the three of you involved in the, the, the food health business, let's put it that way, and the supplement business, um, despair at what you think is going on with, with that sort of stuff? In Matt, what Matt, respect? Well, the, the, we'd st I started off by saying there's a few charlatans out there. D do you despair at the headlines that say there are charlatans out there, or do you despair at the fact that there are an awful lot of bad hats? Uh, I think there are, but again, it, it goes back to regulation. Now, you've got to just not concern yourself with those. You've got to kind of do your own thing and just make sure that you are a reputable, you're a reputable company. And, and in terms of regulation, is, is there enough? Uh, again, how would you quantify enough? There's definitely regulation. Well, there, you as a professional have a better way of understanding yeah, that so, than so I do. So we are think we need more? Um, well, again, it goes back to cost and man hours. So we are regulated. We do adhere to all of our regulation. Now, a young startup company who don't know what the regulations are, they may, if they're not going to be flagged up by the regulatory bodies, they'll be operating outside the regulation. Mm. So again, it goes back to how do you want to quantify Despair? it? Um, or do you think we're on the path to enlightenment? I think, I think there's a bit of both. Um, I think there really is a role for supplements. So there are some people doing great things. Some companies, if they've got the support of a nutritionist behind them, um, might be a little bit more reliable, uh, responsible. Um, but again, it really depends on the individual. Has the individual seeked professional advice and been guided towards buying these supplements? And why, why have they been guided towards now that? That is so. an idea, isn't it? What about working together? Well, I think, um, first of all, the difference between we need to address the online in person thing because the Advertising Standards Authority, their claims very much, they can't protect people from the internet still. And I personally wouldn't feel comfortable working on that basis yet until we have regulation there. Because you can advertise anything. Something, for instance, on TV that's been advertised can't be advertised or could be online. So you've got all these different claims on, on the internet that would never make it on TV because we have regulations there. TV won't let you, but online you can. Well, I can see the difficulties there. You know, it's mm. international. How do you regulate in exactly. different, different territories? Mm. But working exactly. together, what's that about, you know, so that you pull in the reputable nutritionists or the reputable food supplement people, and together they say, look, you know, we, we can guarantee you that this works. I mean, I don't think that you can ever 100% guarantee that someone buying online is going to be correct for the supplement without vetting them first. But I do think that it gives you a little bit more understanding um, of maybe what's in the product, mm. why, why those ingredients are in Perhaps the product. Perhaps rigorous trials. We need a lot of evidence. For us to make a conclusion, we need lots and lots of evidence in order to make uh, an assumption that this is going to be OK. And, and is that how you work, Matt, or do you just decide to go out, perhaps, and pick some plants and mix them up in the laboratory? No, we're, 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 we're not that gung-ho. As I say, everything that we do is regulated. All ingredients are clearly stated online and on the actual product itself. Um, but in terms of working with the individual. You can't vet every individual. But how do you know it works? What you sell, how do you know it works? That's the clients, final question. Clients, long-standing clients, evidence, testimonials. But that's it. We don't do clinical trials. 
That's so perhaps the best, best argument is, is to go and talk to somebody Speak to rather somebody than simply buy it online and take your advice from somebody who's, who's spent a long well, time. A doctor will comfort. also always recommend, for instance, the government guidelines now say vitamin D, as you know and you spoke about mm -hmm. earlier, is essential in the winter months. And that's something we should all be supplementing with. Yeah, so vitamin D is sunshine. Yeah, we need more there. sunshine this year. Actually, it's not just sunshine, <laughs> it's being outside. It is, it? yeah. Listen, there's an awful lot more to talk about, but we have run out of time. I, it goes that's incredibly... Yeah, are you looking at your watch because you've got a train to catch or because you can't no, believe No, no, I was ready to <laughs> go off, go off here, <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. Thank, thank you, Jenna. Thank, thank you, you Rhiannon. Uh, you can go and sing for your supper, I suppose. Uh, since you were a, tra a trained, trained soprano. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, I suppose it goes back to the old business of um, we are what we eat. And at the moment, some people don't exactly know what they are putting in their bodies. But I hope that the three experts in this studio have helped you to understand a little bit more. From me, David Foster, from the Roundtable team who helped to put all this together without whom it would not have been possible. Thank you for watching. We hope to have your company next time. Bye-bye.